Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Welcome to A Toast to the Men with your guy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscription button. Hit the like button. Let's go. Now, this topic is 10 tips to co-parenting for men. Women can use this also, but since I really target men, I speak to men, I am a man, I can relate to men more, this is for men. But of course, both genders can relate to this and, and take this advice, take these tips and implement them into their own life, their, their own co-parenting situation. Now, the first one is the child must have his or her own room. This is very important. When the child or the children come to your home, they must have their own room. It can't be as if they're visiting. No, they're not visiting. They have two homes. They have a home with their mom. They have a home with you. They have their own room with their own things, their own toys or gadgets or whatever, you know, they like. It keeps them entertained. It keeps them educated. It keeps them sharp intellectually. Whatever they need, they have at your home. They don't need to transport anything from their mom's home to your home. They're not visiting your home. I know the court says visitation, that, that's what you're having, visitation. No, don't listen to that. They're not visiting your home. Your home is their home. They should feel comfortable. They should have their own room, their own toothbrush, their own toothpaste, their own witch hazel, whatever soap they use. Everything should be surrounded and be about them when it comes to them coming to your home, their home. That's their second home. They're, they are not visiting. Always remember that. They must have their own home. Number two, you must have the child a doctor and a dentist. This is very important. It can be difficult. It can be challenging uh, getting pertinent information from the mom about the well-being of the child, health, uh, health status as far as dental work, what, what dental work needs to be done, what dental work has been done, uh, checkups, routine checkups for the pediatrician or the doctor. So if you guys don't have a good relationship, a good rapport, where you guys can communicate cordially and relay that type of information. You got to have your child its own doctor and dentist. I would suggest that anyway, uh, because things could go south. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't put all my eggs into that basket because the relationship or the communication is good. Currently, I would always protect myself. Uh, so yeah, yeah, you, you want to be, be on, up on that. And kids generally, but especially with girls, you, you want to stay on top of that with girls as far as the pediatrician. But yes, boys also, but you know, uh, girls bring a different dynamic when it comes to that. So uh, stay on top of that. They are not visiting. I always remember that. Number three, you must have insurance on your child or children. This is kind of piggybacking off of what I just stated about having the child a doctor and dentist. You must have insurance. Just because the mom has insurance on the child, that doesn't exclude you from the responsibility of having insurance on the child. Uh, you also want to have not only medical insurance, dental insurance, you want to have life insurance just in case something happens to the child. The child can be buried. Uh, I've seen many situations where man, children can even be buried. Uh, people are setting up GoFundMe accounts. And that's kind of ridiculous, man. That, that's not even kind of ridiculous. That is ridiculous because life insurance is 
fairly cheap or inexpensive. So uh, it's just about being dedicated and making it a point to have life insurance and pay that life insurance. You got to see that as a necessity, as a bill, just like your lights being on, uh, your phone being on. That's how you have to see life insurance premiums or, or payments. So uh, take care of that, fellas. The child is not a visitor. Always remember that. Number four, no traveling with the bag of clothes. I see uh, guys do this a lot. Um, they want to ask the child, ask the mother, uh, what's in the bag? Do they bring everything they needed? No, fellas. That child should have a full wardrobe at their second home, your home underwear, uh, shirts, pants, socks, shorts, pajamas, anything they need, that should be at your home. They should have a separate wardrobe at your home. You know, this, this may not make sense to you. You may be saying, well, they got clothes at their mom's home. Well, those are clothes that their mom purchased for her home, for the child when the child is with her. Even though your child support money probably pay for those clothes, hey, trust me, have clothes for that child at your home and clothes the child wants to wear. Uh, you know, like I said, the child is not visiting. They should be comfortable. That's their second home. They should move and roam about their, their home hey, with ease. It's their home. It's their second home. They're not visiting, fellas. Number five. Know and build relationships with the teachers and the school. They're important. The teachers and the school should know your face, should see your presence. Now, you and the mother may stay uh, quite a distance from each other, but you got to make that, that effort. Uh, you got to go through it, man. This is uh, the child didn't create the situation. You and the mother create the situation. <clears throat> and you got to deal with it. So, um, for instance, when my children were in uh, elementary. Man, I stayed probably 30 minutes. At, at one point, man, I stayed 45 minutes from their mom uh, and the school district, the school they're in. And then uh, I actually moved a few years later to be a bit closer, but still I was 20 minutes away. Hey man, I had to make every trip down to that school, even with joint, you know, joint custody. You know, I had to make that trip. That school was not a skip jump in a, a skip jump, a jump and a hop. What is it? What is it? A skip jump and a hop. Yeah, I had it's some traveling, man, especially through a rush hour and uh, traffic. You know, it was a uh, it was a deal, but it was worth it. The school knew me. Uh, the teachers knew me. We built up a relationship. We built a, a healthy rapport. And kids, other other students started to know me. Uh, my kids' friends, they started to know me and was expecting me to appear on certain days. So that's very important to the child. It's very important to the child. And uh, I can't speak for white kids or none black kids, but it's very important to Black kids are in that situation, that co-parenting situation, that other kids see that they have a father. Man, you ought to see the look on my kids' faces when I would show up. And this was over the course of years because a lot of those kids don't have involved fathers. And um, the kids get treated differently too when the teachers and the staff know they have an involved, caring father. So always build those relationships, go to those meetings, go to those functions, show up, communicate, ask questions, go to teacher parent conference. Uh, even if you're not invited when they have it and you, you, you know, it may not be your week. Uh, and so the mother doesn't invite you or tell you about it. You create your own one-on-one -on -one teacher parent conference, but you got to be involved. They are not visitors. Remember that, fellas. Number five. Actually, it's number six. 
The child should build friendships in your neighborhood. Very important. Like I said, the child is not a visitor. They should build friendships in your neighborhood, meaning there must be stability. Fellas, you can't be moving from one neighborhood to another neighborhood constantly, one home to another home constantly. You got to be stable. You got to be responsible. That child should be able to make friends and build relationships in that neighborhood and look forward to coming to your home because it's their second home. They feel comfortable. They don't feel out of place. They have friends in that neighborhood. They have their own bed. They have their own hygienic um, materials. They have their own clothing. They are comfortable. They, are, they, they don't feel like visitors. So yes, be stable, be consistent, be responsible. They should form relationships with other children in that neighborhood, right? This is very important, guys. These kids are not visitors. Number seven, the child must have chores and responsibilities. This is very important. Uh, as a father who is not with the child 24 seven or most of the time, uh, we can let guilt sink in and we try to play catch up or make up. And so don't fall into that trap. You have to be consistent and when you do that, you're actually uh, making a child feel like a visitor subconsciously. They might not even realize it, but subconsciously. So they got to have chores and responsibilities at your home, whether it's mopping, um, vacuuming, washing dishes, cleaning the restroom, uh, cleaning their room. It has to be it has to be consistent, right? And they ha they just have to have those chores because they're not visiting visitors don't typically clean up or have chores or responsibilities, right? Home dwellers do, and that's what they are. That's their home. They have responsibilities and duties. One thing, even from an educational uh, standpoint, one thing uh, my wife and I did, we implemented, we noticed that the kids, particularly my son, was kind of behind in reading. So I didn't have to have a conversation with the mom. No, what I did, I implemented a routine, a daily routine. I don't care if it was the weekend, a daily routine where both of them uh, had to read 30 minutes a day. That was a routine. That was like brushing their teeth, 30 minutes a day. I didn't care if it was the weekend and they did this after school. And at first it was a struggle for, for them because they didn't have that routine at their mom's home. So it took them about a month or two to get used to it. And then I didn't have to tell them or remind them of the reading 30 minutes a day. They just knew subconsciously and unconsciously that this is what we have to do. And I saw the reading increase. I saw um, the reading get better. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was a tremendous thing. Uh, tr it was a quite quite a, a feat, and uh, yeah. So that's the thing. You gotta have responsibilities, chores, and be consistent. Don't fall into the guilt game. That's their second home. Again, they are not visitors. Next tip: Stay out of the mother's business if it doesn't concern your child fellas it's two folds to this right uh you may hear things what's going on with the mom or whatever the case stay out of it stay out of it uh if it doesn't concern the welfare of your child stay out of it none of your business if your child is safe your child is doesn't feel threatened or it's not in harm stay out of it not your business. Also, be watchful of this. The child or children may try to flip you guys against each other or flip you against the mom. Uh, don't fall for it. They may come and tell you little things about the mom, like little subtle things to get inside your head. 
don't fall for it. Uh, stay out of it. Take the high road. Actually, talk up the mom. Even if you really don't feel it that way, man. Talk up the mom to the child. Don't talk down the mom. Talk up the mom. And that's going to change the outlook and the perspective of the child. That's going to keep the child more balanced, more sane. You got to remember, it's not about you so much, not about the mother so much. You want to raise and create healthy children. Because one day you got to send these children out into the world uh, by themselves. You're already sending them out into the world when you send them to school. And so whatever issues they have, whatever uh, they're dealing with between uh, you and the mother, they bring it to the school. And then other kids, teachers, staff have to deal with that. But these problems and issues grow as they become adults. They become adults, these issues fester to something bigger, and then we all got to deal with it in this world. And so you want to raise healthy, sane, uh, balanced kids uh, to the best of your ability. And uh, it can be a challenge, but don't talk down the mom. Talk up the mom, whether you feel that way or not, because it's about the child. And we want to send these childs into the world being balanced and healthy. All right. Next tip. Go on vacations with the child or children. Experience the joys of life. They're important because why? They are not visitors. So experience life, man. You can go on a short excursion. You don't even have to leave the city. Um, I took my kids to Reunion Tower, the big ball in Dallas. Man, stayed there about two nights in the ball. Uh, well, not the actual ball, there's a hotel uh, below that ball, but we even went to the ball and looked over the city with the telescopes. Um, but yeah, ate in the room service, uh, went to the the uh, the food court uh, where the food, where the restaurants are, ate there every day. Had a blast, man. Um, yeah, my son, I remember we laugh about this today, my wife and I. My son had ordered, I think, shrimp cocktail, man. And uh, room service came. And they had these huge, I, I want to say they were prawns, though. They were huge. And he was just eating. <clears throat> Didn't want to share them. He was eating, man. He just said, man. And he was like eight years old at the time, I think. He was like, yeah, this is the life. Hey man, we just bust out laughing. And then my daughter, his sister, his younger sister just looked at him like, boy, you, you throw. But man, we still laugh about that to the day. So those are creating those memories, man, those vacations, those excursions. I've taken them to Slitter Bomb, <clears throat> taking them to Austin, Texas, uh, Houston. So you don't you don't have to uh, do anything big, but create those moments, man. Let them experience uh life, uh we don't, we don't take visitors on excursions and vacations like that. So make it a, a normal thing and, and uh, let them experience life, man. Always remember that, like I said before, what how you nurture this child, what you instill in this child, emotionally, intellectually, uh, physically, uh, the world is going to have to deal with that, good or bad. And so you want to instill positivity, good memories, joyfulness. And uh, when you're sending this child into the world uh, as a teenager, as a young adult, as an adult, a full grown adult, they add value to the universe. They add value to people's lives and they're not taken away and, and cause a discord uh, in the lives of others and uh, throwing uh, the, the universe off balance. So, uh, always remember that, guys. These are just a few tips. Nobody, you know, gave me this advice. This is just me reflecting over my own co-parenting experiences. And some of this stuff I was all, already doing. Some I didn't know, you know, until, you know, I started uh, going into the uh, the court system and, and uh, going to the family court system, going for a custody. And I found out a lot of things. So, uh 
yeah, and I thought I was doing the right thing, man, but some things I just wasn't doing, so don't get caught up like that. But I straightened up my thing. I straightened up my, my whole situation. And so, um, yeah, just giving these nuggets back to you, these experiences back to you, so you don't have to go through it, all right? So, yeah, main thing, the child is not a visitor. That's their second home with you. And, uh, yeah, just always remember that, man, all right? Peace.